What's up, Gold Squad? Famox here from Game In Your Face, and I took your guys' recent suggestions. So today we're looking at players in the lower to mid range area as I review the two young stars, Nathan McKinnon and Sean Monahan. Here's the rules. I will play both players for 7 games on 100 chemistry lines. They will not be assigned any boosts or captaincy cards. The overall grade is based on 5 stats. Puck skills, skating, shooting, physical, and defensive. His current average price is 60k, putting him in the same price range as James Van Rymsdijk. Puck skills. He gets an 8.5. McKinnon's hands are quite impressive. He has the passing ability that you would expect from a higher end card like his teammate Matt Duchesne. He had no problem threading a pass in a tight situation to set up a tap in goal. However, once fatigue kicked in, he missed a lot of open teammates. As for his deking, he was very quick and smooth with his stick, but his puck control wasn't always on point and he would often lose the puck if you over dangled. Skating. He gets another 8.5. This is the one ability that really stands out for McKinnon. His speed is easily top 10 in the game and most of his points came from blazing past the enemy defenders. He doesn't have the best acceleration so it does take a while to heat up but he does have superb top speed and when he reaches it, he's gone. However, his agility wasn't as good as some players I've used like Giroud or even Gaudreau. His turns weren't as sharp and his skating just didn't feel as fluid. Shooting. He gets a 6.5. McKinnon's shot is very underwhelming and honestly quite disappointing. If his shot was any better, I would highly recommend him. But unfortunately, his shot is weak and barely seems to find the net. I'm the kind of player that likes to pick the corners, but Max struggled to hit the spot. Even when he was just a few feet away from the goalie, he found a way to miss. All of his goals for me came from Deeks. Physical. He gets another 6.5. Unlike his shooting, McKinnon's poor physicality was no surprise. He's a smaller, speedy player and that usually doesn't go well when it comes to being physical. It didn't take much to make him stumble and lose the puck and of course if you let your opponent line him up, he'll easily get cranked. Defensive. He gets a 7.5. I was pleasantly surprised with how well McKinnon performed in the defensive end. His ability to intercept passes was better than even Jason Spezza. Combined with his speed, it made him great at stopping plays from behind on the back check. However, his face-offs were not the greatest at 41%, so I'd strongly suggest you play him on the wing. Total Points In 7 games, he got 2 goals and 4 assists for a total of 6 points. His overall grade came to 7.5 out of 10, or 75%. McKinnon is a good speedy type player. He has great hands and his poke checks are on point. However, his poor shot and physicality hold him back. I would say that he is a slightly better version of Johnny Hockey. He's faster and has better hands, but put a captaincy card on Gaudreau and you have two pretty equal players. So in no way is McKinnon a terrible player, but at 60k, I just can't say he plays to that value. I would suggest that you wait for his price to drop and maybe pick him up when he's in the 30k range. But before you go spending any coins, let's go take a look at his opponent, Sean Monaghan. His current average price is 50k, putting him in the same price range as Joe Thornton. Puck skills. He gets a 7.5. Monaghan's passing was on par with McKinnon's. He could sauce it through a crowd and not worry too much about being intercepted. However, his deking wasn't as good. His hands are much slower and even when just stick handling back and forth, you could feel the lack of speed. On top of that, he doesn't have very good puck control and he would sometimes struggle when trying to get a handle on the puck. That being said, he can still make successful dekes given perfect timing. Skating. He gets a 6.5. Monaghan is definitely the slowest player I've reviewed so far this year. His acceleration is very poor and even when using the hustle button, he doesn't explode like most players. And when he does reach top speed, he still feels mediocre. The same goes for his agility, as his turns and pivots are much slower than an average player. Shooting. He gets another 7.5. Monaghan's shot is better than McKinnon's, but not by much. There is definitely more power behind both his slap shot and wrist shot, and he can get off that whip when he's fresh on the ice. However, his accuracy is lacking, causing him to put the puck wide. Out of 10 shots, he would probably miss 3. 
physical. He gets a 7. Monaghan is right in the middle when it comes to physicality. He's not overly powerful, but he's not a super weakling either. When protecting the puck along the boards, he will usually be able to shrug off the hits. However, if he gets clipped on open ice, he'll be knocked over. He's also not much of a hitter himself. There were a lot of times when he had a player in his crosshairs, but he just bounced off. Defensive. He gets an 8. Monaghan plays like a true 2A forward as he's solid in the defensive end. As long as you have him in the right position, he will have no problem taking away opposing passes. His faceoffs were also better than McKinnon's going 19 for 35 for 54%. However, I still wouldn't suggest playing him as your first line center, maybe the second or third. Total points. In 7 games, he got 3 goals and 3 assists for a total of 6 points. His overall grade comes to 7.3 out of 10 or 73%. Monaghan is a solid 2-way player. He can shut it down in the defensive end, he has a decent shot and can make great passes. I would classify him as Kopitar light. However, I would say he's best suited for the third line. His speed, face-offs, and poor puck control don't allow him to hang with the big boys just yet, especially not at his price of 50k. I think Monaghan would be a good player to add depth to an already solid lineup, maybe for around 20 to 25k, but not a player to save up for in an attempt to add scoring power or to be a game changer on your team. So overall, I can't suggest for you guys to go buy either of these players at their current price points. There are many other players that can perform just as good, if not better, at a lower cost. But let's see what you guys thought in the community review. For McKinnon, in the usual order, you gave him an 8. 8.5, 7.56, 6, and 6 for an overall grade of 7.2. For Monaghan, you gave a 7.5, 7.57, 7, and 6.5, and another 7 for an overall grade of 7.1. So for the second review in a row, you guys were just a few percent off from my gradings, and we both agree that McKinnon has a slight edge over Monaghan. If you want to participate in next community review, then go click in the link in the description for Team of the Week Forsberg. I also want to note that you guys that put all zeros or all tens, your submissions get removed and uh, don't count for the average. So let's just keep it legit. And uh, this concludes this review. If you guys want to see more of these, then be sure you check out the new review page on huthead.com. They also have the complete Hut player database, forms, and the best online team builder. And their front page news has you covered for everything Hut related. If you could also leave me a like and subscribe if you're new to join the Goyf Squad, where I provide in-depth reviews so you can make informed decisions. I'm Famox, and I'll see you in the next one.